In this video, we're gonna look at BO2 max. We're gonna talk about why it's important, how it can be improved, and what it actually means to you as an athlete. Hopefully, it will motivate you to hit those really hard, sharp VO2 max efforts. Also, counterintuitively, why you need to focus on the longer efforts sometimes too. So, first things first, what is a VO2 max? Put simply, VO2 max is the amount of oxygen you can use during dynamic training at any one point. Less simply, your VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen in milliliters you can consume per minute per kilo of body weight at your maximum performance. It is measured in milliliters per kilo per minute. So having a higher VO2 max is indicative of having a stronger heart so you can push around oxygen Better. Your red blood cell count will also probably be higher and your mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, are probably consuming more oxygen to produce energy. So how does one measure their VO2 max? If you have a little bit of spare cash, you can do this in a lab. That's when they put the face mask on you and they're measuring how much oxygen is going in and the amount of carbon dioxide you're expending. Normally, they will begin by measuring your lactic threshold and then they'll chuck you on the treadmill at that threshold and slowly up the intensity by ramping up the gradient on the treadmill. You should hit complete failure at about nine to 12 minutes. And I tell you what, it hurts like hell. Obviously, as I've just said, that is expensive and also difficult to do. Many running watches try to give you an estimate, but I'd always take these with a pinch of salt. I would spend less attention on the absolute number that watch is giving you and more how it's changing over time. Why is it actually important? Runner, triathlete, and exercise physiology PhD candidate Alexandra Coates explains, VO2 max certainly plays a big part in running performance. This is because it represents the maximum work rate you can perform. VO2 max is directionally proportional to how fast you'll end up running at the end of the ramp test. There is a caveat to this though, as VO2 max is only only a little bit of the whole equation. Running economy, lactic threshold, they both also play a massive part in the overall performance. For example, athlete A has a maximum VO2 max of 55 milliliters per kilo per minute, and athlete B has a 60 milliliters per kilo per minute. If both are able to work at 80% of their VO2 max during the race, obviously, athlete B is gonna win over athlete A. However, if athlete A has a much higher lactic threshold and is able to improve their running economy enough, they might be able to push that 80% up to 95%. 95% and 55, that's 52.5, and 80% of 60, well that's 48. Athlete A's now got the advantage. This is what Jack Daniels running formula in his V-dot is trying to calculate. His V-dot is a much more relevant number as it tries to combine all the factors into a single digit to indicate performance. But how can you improve your VO2 max? To improve your VO2 max, you need to stress the engine. So running in that zone, we can only sustain that pace for about 12 minutes or less is how you're gonna do it. You'll be starting to stress the system and you'll be running close to your absolute max, pushing up that boundary. And this is why as a coach, I set intervals that only last a few minutes or seconds. We're trying to push that number up and up and up, ultimately making you faster all other things being equal. On the flip side, there's running economy and lactic threshold. Working your VO2 max engine doesn't entirely help these numbers. This is where threshold efforts and the Lydiard style steady state stuff comes in. The longer efforts on the other side of the spectrum, well, they're gonna be able to help you push that percentage up of what you're able to work at of your max. So that's where that athlete A went from 80% to 95%. That's what we're aiming for here. But is the VO2 max actually just as important for say a 5K as it is for a marathon? Well, we're able to work much closer to our absolute max as the distance decreases. For very highly trained athletes, they will be able to work closer to their utter max for 5K races or shorter. As we go up the distance, we obviously can't run at that max number the whole time. So the sustainability of your running becomes more and more important. The Lydiard recommendation of training above and below race pace has this in mind. Training just one aspect isn't good enough. That's why in the kind of your marathon blog, we have the speed blog that comes before and we're trying to push up your absolute max number as the demands of marathon training and longer efforts, well, they're way below lactic threshold, so you're not gonna be able to stress 
your VO2 max system. But what it will be doing is helping your running economy and lactic threshold. The Jack Daniels maintenance principle shows that we're able to maintain a high VO2 max during the block by doing very little actual VO2 max work. That's why it's still thrown into the block, but it's not really emphasized as much as it is pre-block. Likewise, when training for shorter events, it's good to have a strong aerobic base beforehand. So then when we want to absolutely wham up that VO2 max, we're able to use our running economy and lactic threshold to get really, really close to that number. This probably leads me on to periodization of training and how you can vary up your training through the year. And that's gonna be a different video. Hopefully this gives you a clear idea why we set specific sessions in Project Run other than just wanting you to completely hurt. As ever, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe for more running content. And as ever, I'll catch you in the next one.